This video is sponsored by Rank Ranger, an all-in-one SEO platform that offers dozens of customizable tools and reports. Check them out at rankranger.com. What do you miss most about, I guess, the old days before you worked at Google? Is there anything you missed? I mean, the stress of not having to run a company, I get that. That's something you probably do not miss, but what do you miss most? I mean, you know, if you've been a journalist, you kind of excite like the rush of a deadline and you know, breaking news and I was just going to go out there and start saying stuff and the way you go and you know that's kind of exciting yeah I remember so. you used to be get something breaking and in a matter of like minutes you write this like crazy long article I don't know how you did it um, mm. or still do it probably um, ready to know what you guys what you do you already told us what you do at Google but was it awkward when you first came to Google and like people are like looking at some people probably know who you are because you've been a critique of Google for a really long time mm -hmm. and now you're inside of Google was that like kind of awkward for you or them no it wasn't I mean because they knew from 1996 that I was coming over so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The back channels had started so long ago yeah. that it was like, oh, finally, um, he's They've been implanting, they're making you drink the Google juice for years. Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, like, I had one team, they were like, oh, yeah, we remember when you were critiquing us live, and we were all like, ah, but they were, and it wasn't a good critique but on some yeah. of the stuff, but they were also like, we understood why, and that was right, and so, like, you know, the, the one thing I always tried to do when I was writing was to write stuff that I thought would be fair criticism and not stuff that I'd ever be afraid that if I encountered somebody that they'd be like, why were you that way? Like, yes. and, and so I think that's all right. But for the most part, it wasn't like the first week, I think there was some, not weirdness, but I'd be in these meetings and like, I'm like, suddenly you're just like everything. You just say everything. And you, I'm like... Am I supposed to see? But you know, right? Yeah, no, no, I could see it. I did one one time. I like, I was asking, like, is there a tool that'll let me see this thing? And they're like, oh yeah, do this thing. We're all in this meeting. I'm checking out something, and I went, oh! <laughs> <laughs> they all looked at me. I'm like, going, I've just never seen. Like, I'm like, oh, I could got vision. So that's very cool. Let me ask you because a lot of Googlers have left Google. Yeah, having access to those tools would that make you a better SEO? Uh, in your opinion. Or maybe, having had access to those tools. Maybe for a short period of time. So if you worked at Google and you were also doing SEO on the side, you could definitely somewhat benefit from that? It depends on where you were working at Google. Like I Your job, for the, if you're doing SEO on the side. Not that you're doing SEO on the side, but if you were doing SEO on the side, could you... Oh, if I'm going to go off and do SEO now? Yeah, if you're about to um, quick, cause I'm sure you, Yeah, I would probably have a better understanding of some things, sure. But it also become very dated quickly, and it still wouldn't. But this is stuff you're trying to communicate anyway, or it's like having this deeper knowledge of stuff that I don't have access to, or other people don't have access to. It's just I can better understand Google's own visibility of some things. Okay, that's so. fair. Uh, did Matt Cuts give you any advice when you first came here? Matt Cuts was not here, right? When you no, he wasn't um, here. He said, don't do any interviews with Barry. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. And um, get in line early for food. Um, no, um, uh, it wasn't so much advice. He was just nice. Yeah. <laughs> he was just, like, excited. He's like, he I'm really he, excited, yeah. Yes, he's, he's very, he's genuinely like, you're going to have a great time and enjoy it and, you know, go out there and do all the good stuff. And so, yeah. How much more? It's 3.33. How much more time do you think we have? No, we're all right. We're, we're good. We've got a few more time. Okay. Um, more time. Were there any, like, big challenges when you first moved over here in terms of either something you wanted to write or something you wanted to say? Or is there anything that stands out like, oh, this is a challenge for me to do? Um, one challenge is, like, having this sort of imperfect understanding of search. I don't quite mean it like that. It's like I remember this one book called Imperfect Education. Maybe that was the wrong title. But um, there's a cart going by over there, but it is going away. And I'm sure you can't hear it out there. We can hear it. It's yeah. loud. But um, I tell this story. People are always like, what it's like being a Google? And there's this one story I always tell, which is like, when I was in college, I had to take German for two years. Right. Yeah, ich brauche ein bisschen Deutsch, aber sehr schlecht. And that's all that I can say. Um, and I probably didn't even say that I don't speak German very well. Very well. That's what I said, and I didn't say it very well. Anyway, um, so I, I took German for two years because you had to do it as an English major because for whatever reason you had to study another language to prove that you could speak and write. A, anyway, yeah, I get it. So then I, like after college, I got to go to Germany, 
so this is it. Like, and I was a bad German student, by the way. I mean, like, failed one of my classes. But still, I'd done all the work. And I got there, and I'm like, all right, Germany, hit me with some German, right? So, you know, and I get in the cab, and I'm like, okay, where do you want to, I'm like ready to go, and I'm all geared up my, and the cab driver's like, Gruß Gott, and he's like hitting me with these Bavarian words, and like, like another thing is like a side thing, but if you're from Germany, you like this, you know, and, and like, especially in the south of Germany, they're always like going, um, oh, what's it, Genau. They always just throw genaus in there, which means enough or right. Uh, it's like the way we would say, you know, right, you know, right, you know, right. So all I of a sudden, when, you know, I hate when people say and this and this phrase saying right, right, and, right. So they're always saying that, uh, but you didn't learn that. Right. So then I'm anyway. The point is coming here. I spoke search, and then I was suddenly talking to people who were very fluent in search and also fluent in a really unique dialect, like the Google dialect of search. Yeah. So I'm constantly like, what, what? And also, there's nothing that we don't love here at Google but our acronyms. So, yeah. Bert. Yeah, but they would be BERT. <laughs> and there would be this acronym this, acronym that. Yeah. So that was probably the biggest challenge is learning the, the vocabulary and also just who does what and where and who do I talk to? And someone will raise a question on Twitter and they're like, why did you do that? And you're like, okay, and I don't answer immediately. He's like, why are you not answering? And it's like, because I'm, first of all, just trying to figure out who even knows, right? It's like hundreds of people, like, who, what is that? What exactly is going on? And it takes a little while to, you know, that, so. Yeah. Cool. Um, are there anything like, you've been here for about two years, right? Yes. So it's over to you. Is there one thing that stands out as like the most, biggest accomplishment you had? So uh, gosh, there's so many. I know. No. Um, <laughs> this is big. You know, it's hard. This is, yes, thank you. This is this is a big deal. This yeah. is a big deal. You were very involved in this? I've been involved as one of the key planning people. Okay. But it's not like my sole thing. Like I said earlier today, this had come from, you know, one right. of our, our, our senior, senior executives saying, I would like to do something where people on my team are interacting with it. Right. And then that went out. And so I've been involved as part of the planning process. So um, I think that's been a big thing um, doing some of the clarity posts like on feature snippets or autocomplete trying to explain those trying to put together uh, some of the better guidance like on help like on the dates types of things those have been good um, I love being involved with before and after I love the before and after commands those are really yeah. significant and I look forward to them getting out of beta but I mean like to be involved with you know a whole like whole new command like yeah, we haven't had been cool. for a long time so that was very cool they haven't named a google update after you yet or for you yeah then we don't need updates yeah, that way <laughs> updates will always be named now something update date month year something update i so, guess oh by the way yeah the core update yeah that's really significant to to because i really was involved with saying look can we yes. start communicating these more in a consistent manner so that people understand what's happened and that they understand that it's not a penalty type of thing and all that stuff. That's, I think that was really significant. And then it's the thing about, we have no advice for you, but then you gave advice. Was that you pushing to give advice? Yes, or? but that was advice. Do write natural content naturally. But which it wasn't new advice. No, but sometimes they but need I think But I think one of the things that gets forgotten is that we would have these updates and people would have changes and some of them would have traffic <laughs> drops and then they would conclude, oh, I have been penalized, right? So it's significant to say you didn't drop because of a penalty. It wasn't, you weren't penalized. It wasn't a panda type of situation. Right. You, you have not been penalized. So don't go trying to fix things that aren't necessarily broken. I would like you guys to throw out some more penalties and announce them. Okay. Okay, that's my personal request. I'll get to work on that okay, right thank away. You. Um, speaking about things that annoy you, since I just said something that probably sure. annoys you or annoys some people at Google, is there anything that now that you're part of the Google that you can see would be like I know you the most about the SEO community because I can see that I, I feel sometimes that what I report on gets under the skin of some Googlers never gets under our skins or we have no skins. we have no skins yes it's true you're all robots <laughs> is there anything like you can see from now being at Google that somewhat annoying that the SEO community does um you can say you don't want to answer no there's nothing annoying everything's perfect no, I think it can be, I wouldn't say annoying, but like we went through that one thing where 
the size of snippets got larger yes. and then smaller and people are like how long should they be and we're like as long as you want and they're like how long should they be and we're like as long as you want and then it was like well our advice you said was they were this many characters it's like we never said that and it's like but you did say it. it's like we literally never said it and it would be like why can't you just give us clarity it's like the clarity is there is no thing right. it's like but that's not clarifying enough it's like but and then I'm like, I mean, I literally just answered someone today and said, well, I'm trying to write everything to the to your maximum lengths for descriptions. Like, we don't have any maximum lengths. So it's like, I don't, sometimes we're at things and we literally provide an answer and then it's like, but I we don't like that answer. So we're just gonna, I don't know. I, I, I'm, at, I, I'm at a loss in some of those situations. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm not to take away from the fact that the more we can increase the transparency, the more we can give good guidance, all that stuff, great. But like, what's subdomains or subfolders? Which is the right one? Right. Uh, we Three really don't care. Piece. What do you mean you don't care? The true <laughs> answer is obviously this and you're wrong if you don't believe it. And that's just the way it is and why it's like, no, we're giving you a subtle answer. Whatever you want, we really don't care. And we can't give you one straight answer because it could just really depend. And that can be like, well, that's not a satisfactory answer. It should be clear. It's like, okay, I don't know what else to do. Yeah. I mean, and I think people think that Google is outright lying to them, which I can see being fairly annoying to hear because you're trying to give yeah. an answer that's good for, the, for them, good for everybody, and it is the truth, I think. Yeah, we're not outright lying. And it's not, I just, ugh. I remember covering a tweet that Gary said once that we don't lie. And then everybody comments. That was a lie. <laughs> That All was right. a lie. Since, I, I, we, we have it like was such a lying 20 minutes tweet. until the session. So what do you feel differently since joining Google that you maybe felt differently before joining Google? It's a I tough th question, but. I think I understand some of the products a little better. For example, I mean, I spent a lot of time trying to talk about both feature snippets and autocomplete. Yes. And here when feature snippets launched, a lot of people considered them like, and we would do sessions on how they were going to destroy SEO because no one would ever click. But the reality is that they're not intended to provide answers. They're intended to feature a site that is more likely to answer your query and actually cause people to go to the site. Right. And when I would talk with the product team, I understood that better, and that's part of the communication about it. And of course, they do drive a lot of traffic. Or with autocomplete, you know, I look at autocomplete and could be like, oh yeah, that's just designed to suggest things for you to search. And the autocomplete team would be like, no, 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 no. We don't ever call them suggestions because they're not suggestions, they're predictions. Because we're just, the purpose right. of the product is to predict what you're already typing and more quickly get you there. And we can understand that sometimes you, people might go in other directions and that's why we have all these policies. But I think understanding and talking more about some of these products has given me better insight into, you know, like, oh, that's what you meant. Well, if I had known that from the beginning, I might have liked it a bit better. And well, I think then, John has communicated, the, at least you and John have both communicated the feature snippet thing. Yeah. Although it still makes me wonder, like, why don't you show click through rate stuff? Uh, differ, like, why can't you differentiate That is two? excellent feedback. And that's maybe what they said there. that's what we said today. <laughs> but they still very, it seemed like they shook their heads nose to that. And I'm not really sure why. Well, the Search Console team, uh, like, that is a decision that, you know, yeah. multiple people would have to be involved with. But it was heard. I mean, I was just talking to someone else about it. It's like, oh, maybe. So, yeah. All right, my last big question for you is, now that you've been in both seats, what should SEOs think about that they not, might not be thinking about? And I know how I would answer this, and I'll tell you how I would answer it afterwards, but I want to hear from you. Not that I work at Google, but. I mean, I don't know if I say I have the best content, they'll be like, you just have the best content. But, you know, that's. I just keep focusing on the content. I really would. And if and you can't understand, that, because that's the foundation of everything you're doing. That's foundation the foundation what we're doing, but what what's Google trying to do? Reward good content. Exactly. So, I, mean, I don't even, I don't, yeah. it's like, oh, like that last thing about BERT, like what, how do I optimize for BERT? You mean, how do you optimize for having good content? I have more content. It's like, I think the difficult thing is people don't understand what good content is. It's, it's like a, you can't, you I can't mean, break it down. They, people tend to, I think, prefer things like, so is that 600 words? Right. Because you can understand that. And I just think yeah. it's not gonna be that. And that's why when we did do the blog post, like 
So like I said, when we started doing the core updates, it was like, there's nothing broken, there's nothing to fix. And that's not satisfactory. Well, still, we need to know what's so Okay, so the last point that we did, it was really like, here are some more questions to ask yourself. Yeah. And to be thinking about that. And then it was interesting, because then I had like, oh, and heaven forbid, we actually linked to five external sites that oh had some God. thoughts, right? <laughs> that was funny. And then I gather that what happened is we had this whole, debate that had been going on in some forums about is eat a ranking factor and because we should calculate it this way and and i'm thinking why what, what how are you getting all the ways down to here rather than just going back to the post that said yeah. here are 20 things to ask yourself did you did you not even ask those like that it's like why can't you it's like we literally did a post saying these are some things that might give you an idea on whether or not you're doing good content or you're doing good things to help make your site seem trustworthy right. or have expertise and it really is asking and sometimes i like think i don't know if anybody's actually asked themselves fair enough we are not perfect we don't get it right all the time. There's always going to be things that we need to improve. There's certainly going to be cases where there are things we should have been ranking that we weren't ranking, all that stuff. But that's your goal. Yes. And if you're providing that content, Google hopefully will one day get to that point yes. where that content will rank number one. Um, I appreciate everything you do for the community. I appreciate you being a mentor for me over the years. Thank you for everything you've done for me personally, for the community, at both before working at Google and after working at Google. Damn, you've been just, at Google all along, baby. Yes, it's true. <laughs> and we're technically at Google right now. And with that said, how can people, you know, follow you, um, learn more about you? Not that they're probably all following you anyway. But. I mean, you know, it's just my name on. I don't have my name badge on, but it's my name, all one word on Twitter is the easiest way. But you have to take everything if you do that. Like it's going to be, like when I'm watching on TV, or whatever. But you're, you can follow that if you want, or you can follow the search liaison account. And then you can just get like anything that's really important that I think is worthwhile, you know, sharing out there in that kind of manner. Thank you so much for doing this. Yeah, I appreciate thank it. you. All right. <laughs>